Hello, welcome to Riverview Cable's Dining and Entertainment Guide. I'm Mike Tedesco. And I'm Chris Tedesco. And we've been here since 1916. We're going to show you some of the dishes that have kept us in business for over 70 years. The first one we're going to make today is veal scallopini. It's a very easy dish to make. You, uh, at any given time, would have veal at home. You might want to try this dish. It's very simple. Can I borrow your lighter, Chris? Mm-hmm. Okay. A little bit of butter in the pan. Let it get hot. And take pieces of nice veal. Flour them. The reason you flour the veal is so that the veal does not burn. If it hits a hot pan, the veal will shrivel up and get real, real hard. Okay, now we just flour it up, just like that. Take the veal. Now you want to cut it in a couple of little pieces. Now the reason it has the name veal scallopini marsala is because of the wine, which is a marsala wine that we use here. Okay, now the pan is nice and hot. We put the veal in. Be very careful when you do this at home because it is very, very hot. I'm quite used to it. Give me the wine, Chris. Okay, and I need the fork. Okay, we're just going to give this a couple of minutes on one side. Now, in this dish, we're going to use a brown gravy. Uh, we use our own brown gravy here. If you don't make a brown gravy, buy one at the supermarket. You know, whatever, whatever kind of brown gravy that you like. There we go. Okay. That's the marsala wine. Let it get nice and hot. Only takes a minute. Okay, Chris. Chris is putting in some of the brown gravy. Okay. This is this is veal scallopini marsala. If you want mushrooms in it, veal veal marsala with mushrooms. You can use fresh or canned, whatever is available at the time. Give me a dish. And that's, that's it. Garnish it any way you'd like. Just takes this long. It's a very, very good dish and a very big mover here at Tedesco's. There you have it. And that's it. Now the veal, veal franchise is a little bit different. We take the veal, the same veal. Give me the pan. We take the veal and we do the same thing with it. In this, we use clarified butter because it's going to be on here a little bit longer than the other one, and we don't want it to uh, we don't want it to burn. Butter burns very very fast. Okay, this one here we're not going to cut. We're just going to use the two big pieces. It's got to go from the egg right in here. Okay, we just give that a little minute to get hot, and then we're going to go right into the egg, just like you would bread anything at home, except no crumbs. Okay, we just give the pan another minute. Okay, this is a lemon sauce. The franchise is a lemon sauce. Okay. It's a little sloppy, but pan is very hot. Be very careful if you're doing this at home. I'm very used to doing this. Okay, just like the veal scallopini, it only takes a couple of minutes. Now, now you put the lemon in according to how much lemon that you like. If you like a lot of lemon, put a lot in. I usually put about a half or maybe a little bit more than a half. Chris is slicing some of the pieces that we're going to use for a garnish later on. Okay. Okay. Now, just got to watch out for any pits that you don't wind up eating. Now, we have a consomme stock that we put in here. This consomme stock, it's a little bit of chicken soup is all it is. It adds a lot of flavor to the dish. Okay, now just another minute more. That's all it takes. It's very, very fast. Okay, you know what, let me put this here. Now, we're just gonna sit the pan back down another minute to thicken it up a little bit. All right. Now this stews down a little bit and it makes a nice little thick syrup. 
And that's what you want. You don't want it too watery. You don't want it like soup. Just a tiny bit of body to it. Okay. So I can smell that lemon already. Okay, you can pour that right over the dish. Garnish it with the parsley. And then you have the veal franchise. And there's the veal franchise, all finished. Now, next we're gonna make some, we're gonna make our dough. We're gonna make pizza gain in just a minute, and we're gonna make a Sicilian pizza. It's a very thick pie, so we're just gonna get you started on the recipe for the dough. Okay. All right, that's six cups of flour. It's two and a half cups of water. It's about a teaspoon or a tablespoon of salt, two ounces of oil, and about one ounce of yeast. Now the yeast you should dissolve in water before you start. You should dissolve the yeast and then dump it in. Put the machine on, turn it on, you gotta beat it very slow. If you don't have an, an automatic mixer at home, you can do it by hand. Okay, now we're gonna go right to making the pizza again. Chris will have my stuff ready for me in a second. Very, very simple to make. You just take a weight. That's the dough that we just made a while ago. You just beat it down. If you have a rolling pin, you'd like to use a rolling pin, you go right ahead and use a rolling pin. I'm very good at this. I'm very used to using the dough. But if you're not, you can use a rolling pin. Just roll it right up. That's if you're not at home to using your hands. As far as, the, as, far as putting it in the pan, you don't have to be too fussy. If I have a little bit of oil for here, usually. All right, we're just gonna put a little bit of oil in it first. You can put olive oil or regular oil, whatever you like to use. Okay, now we'll put the dough in here. And then we put in, we put in the, uh, the cheese in a mixing bowl. We need to mix all this stuff up in a mixing bowl, which we didn't do. Here we have some ham, some salami, some pepperoni, some cheese. We're just gonna chop it all up. We're gonna put this all into the pot, and then we're gonna mix it. And watch your fingers. Watch your fingers. This board is moving. Okay, we'll put this under here. Okay, you, we're gonna send you, if you send a self-addressed stamped envelope to Tedesco's restaurant, we'll send you all of these recipes. We're gonna give you that address a little later on in the program because we really don't have enough time to go through all of these uh, recipes with you. Okay, put it all into a pot or a mixing pan. Put in the cheese. You can take the eggs. Now, we, we use three eggs to mix them. One, two, three. Now, these will have to be mixed up. Chris, if you want to mix that for me. Okay. While Chris is mixing that up, well, you can use your, feel free to use your hand on this dish because it's very, very tough to uh, use it really otherwise. It. You really gotta mix that up. Now, we have one already made for you that we're gonna get. Here, I'll finish this. We have one that we already made before. We're gonna show you what it looks like when it's finished. Uh, if you wanna put sausage in this dish, you go right ahead and put sausage in it. If you wanna put uh, a hard boiled egg, sometimes this is also called an Easter pie. And here it is here, it's all finished. This dough recipe that we give you, this is this right here. The same dough recipe we give you here, you can make bread with it, you can make breadsticks with it, you can make any kind of thing you want with it. The recipe for the dough is excellent. Here's, what the, here's how the bread cooks. It's really very simple and very fast. Okay, Chris, the uh, Sicilian pie, while we're going to come that. right back to the, to, to the Sicilian pie in just a couple of minutes. We're going to meet with Chris at the bar, and he's going to show us how to make some mixed drinks and uh, how to set up a bar in your home. Okay, we're at the bar now, and what I'd like to show you is some of the traditional drinks 
that you'd be serving at your home, whether um, it's a formal party or just a, a friendly get-together with some friends. The first thing I'd like to show you is how to make a nice martini. And years ago, the traditional martini was made at about four parts gin and one part vermouth. That's been done away with. With the new, um, the new tradition is maybe eight parts to one for a regular martini. Extra dry is even more so than that, what they call an in and out. So you just rub the, the dry vermouth in the glass and dump it out. And then pour the gin in. And whether they want a lemon twist or an olive, you know, that you'd have to ask them for. You stir it a couple of times, you know, to chill down the drink. And have your glass already with some water and ice chilled. Some olives, Mike? Perfect. And you pour it right in. And right there you have a perfect martini. The next drink I'd like to show you is a Manhattan. And in this drink, whether it be served straight up or on the rocks, put some ice cubes in the glass, a couple of dashes of uh, aromatic bitters, which enhances the appetite. Because this is a drink that's served, you know, before dinner to stimulate the appetite. Use the sweet vermouth, about three quarters of, of an ounce. And then your rye, which is about an ounce and a half. And you stir it over the ice. and pour it into your rocks glass. If you make it right, it comes out just like that, right to the top of the glass. Garnish with a cherry. The next most popular drink that I like to make for you is a sour. Whether it be um, a whiskey sour, scotch sour, apricot sour, blackberry sour, amaretto sour. There's a million different variations that you can use. You put about an ounce and a quarter of, of lemon juice, and you can use any, any type brand that, uh, that you prefer, Tree Ripe or uh, Lemon X. The one I use has no simple syrup in it, so you have to add the sugar, about a level teaspoon and a half of sugar, okay? We'll make this scotch sour. And then you pour your scotch in, about an ounce and a quarter, like so and then you shake it up. And don't be afraid to shake it vigorously because the, um, the egg white in the lemon juice will create the foam, you know, for the drink. And this is garnished with a cherry and an orange. And as you can see, that's like a picture perfect drink. And like, like when you're cooking with food, the eye appeal is the same uh, as with a nice dish that, that gets served to you. If it looks good, you know, it appeals to the first sense, and then the taste is right. Okay, I think we have time for one more drink that I'd like to show you. About a quarter ounce of lemon juice, one ounce of vodka. We put a little bit of celery salt in little bit extra pepper, not too much salt, about three drops of Tabasco, and the cap went that way, and about three dashes of Worcestershire, and a little bit of horseradish. Make a nice Bloody Mary, cure the best of hangovers. Fill it up to about that level right there. Gently shake it. All came out well, we'll come right to the top. Mike, you have the garnish. Look at that. 
guaranteed to get you through the next day. We're going to go to a commercial right now. If anybody has any drinks that they'd like to try and stump me with, please send it in. And if you do stump me, I'll be glad to give you a free drink on the house. Thank you. There is a need in your own hometown. Please join your local chapter. Should you know more about Social Security? Many people don't know the half of it. I knew I paid for it out of every paycheck. Well, that's just the way it was. But now I see it's a part of my whole retirement plan. I didn't think Social Security would be around when I retire. But now I know there's enough money to pay benefits way into the next century. Get the whole story. Call 1-800-937-2000 for this free booklet and see what's in it for you. Social Security. It never stops working. Welcome back. Now we're going to make the Sicilian pizza. This is the dough that we made before in the machine. And I'm just going to beat it right out here. Stretch it right down. As Mike works the dough for the Sicilian pizza, I'd like to tell everyone about our delivery service that we have. It's operating now uh, three years. Uh, we deliver six nights a week from uh, Tuesday to Sunday from 6 to 11. And you can get everything that we have on our regular menu, uh, plus um, you know, any beer or wine that you'd like to have delivered, cigarettes, whatever you need. Uh, you can also charge it on American Express, Visa, or MasterCard. Aside from that, we also cater on and off the premises. There's no party too large or too small. You tell us uh, how extravagant or how, uh, how inexpensive you want to go, and we'll cater to your needs. OK, now this is going to take just a little bit of time to beat down. It's very, very thick. It's very heavy. Sicilian pie has to be very thick. It may take you a little longer to beat this down than me, because it's really very tough to get used to. What we're going to do is we're going to put it in this pan, and then we're going to cover it with a light coat of oil, and then we're going to let it raise some more. When it raises a little bit, it goes into the oven, <clears throat> where we'll just leave it for, just blanch it in there for just a minute or two. Once that happens, it'll set. When the dough sets, it won't, it won't squash itself down again. And uh, otherwise, it gets to be very, very tough. See, we've got a little ways to go yet. All right, we're going to show you one that we did this to. And I can show you what I mean. OK, after this goes in here, when we finally stretch this thing out, we'll cover it with a light coating of oil and cover it with some saran, saran wrap, then let it raise for about an hour or two. It gets like double in size. Here's what it looks like. This dough has raised a little bit. When it did, we put it in the oven just for a couple of minutes. Now that this has happened, it's, it, it's pretty solid. Now we can go right ahead and make our pie. You put your favorite sauce on there, whatever kind of sauce you like. You can put any kind of topping or any kind, just make a regular pizza pie. Uh, this dough also is, is the same dough that we use for making pizza pies. Now the recipe I gave you for the dough is the recipe we've been using here since the early 1940s when we started making pizza pies. In fact, we're one of the oldest places that have been making, continuously making pizzas over the years. Now the pie is ready. You can put your topping on. You can put this into an oven at about 550 degrees. It takes a little longer than a normal pie because it is very thick and it does take a considerable amount of time to cook it. Mike's making this one with pepperoni, sausage, peppers, and mushrooms, which is a good combination. Should hit anybody's taste buds. OK. There's the pie. This is what it looks like. Now you just put it back into the oven for another 15 minutes. This is what you get. This is a nice, thick pie that is cooked all the way through. It's not, it's not uh, soggy. It's not, it's not thin. It's nice and thick. It's like a big piece of bread. It's a nice size pie if you like that style of pie. OK, next we'd like to make uh, super de peche. This is uh, like the... Uh, 
The French make a bouillabaisse soup. It's got all kinds of very, very good things in it. It's got clams and shrimps and mussels. This is an excellent, excellent uh, soup. Okay, I need the burner. Mm -hmm. Okay, we'll put this pot on here to start up with the oil. We'll put some oil in the bottom, in which we're going to fry our garlic. Okay, we have onion, garlic, parsley. This is all going to be fried in with the oil just as soon as it gets hot. Now, we also going to have, we have some pulp tomatoes that we're going to crush for you. This is uh, about a, what was it, 16 ounces of uh, tomatoes. You squeeze them up real good. Can't be afraid to use your hands a little bit. You gotta use your hands sometimes. Okay, this is my onion. This is a couple of uh, cloves of garlic. You can smash this or you can chop it. It all depends on, on how fine you want your garlic. Use a little more, use a little less if you want. We'll just throw that in the pot. We'll cut up the parsley. Do we have a spoon over there? Okay. All pretty ground. All right, we're just chopping up the parsley nice and fine. Nothing gives a nice taste like fresh parsley. Ground the garlic. Okay. Garlic and onions up real nice. This gets all ground up very nice. When this is golden brown, when that's golden brown, then we're going to add, then we're going to add our sauce, our tomatoes. Okay. Now we also going to put into that yeah. chicken stock. Use uh, whatever chicken. Uh, half a pint. Half a pint of chicken stock in here. The lobster's doing well. He the lobster's still. He's waiting. Oh, very good. We'll put in our tomatoes that Chris crushed. Okay. Okay. And now we have our seasonings. We have American thyme, about a teaspoon. Pepper, grated cheese. Okay, those a little salt and a little and and, and a uh, little sugar. You always put a little sugar in, in all kinds of tomato sauces. It helps kill the acid. Okay, now this has got to boil. The, uh, the anchovies. The anchovies. Right, the anchovies, anchovies. You don't have to chop them up because they'll just break right apart. A few pieces of anchovies. That means you don't have to add too much salt in there because the anchovies are very very salty. Now, when the sauce comes to a boil, that's when you're going to put in all of the shells, the shellfish. A little bit of water for the... Uh, a quart of water just to give you a little more because it's going to be very, very uh, spicy. Okay, when the sauce, when the soup starts to boil, you put in all of your, all of your uh, clams, all of your hard shellfish. You can put mussels, you can put clams, you can put whatever you like, really. Okay. Uh, also, you got to put the lobster in. Now he's still alive. He's still moving. He's not going to feel a thing. Hopefully. I've never heard one complain. Uh, <clears throat> for those of you who, uh, well, don't look. This, uh, this is going to be too squeamish. Yeah, this is going to hurt me probably a lot more than it hurts him. You've heard that before. You just cut right him in half. Right across the tail section. That's all. You can tell this is fr fresh. It's still uh, still going in. He doesn't like this too much. Okay. And you cut it again in another piece. You throw this in the soup. Okay, now the claws, you got to remove. You got to remove. It's still alive. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> remove the claws. Okay, now we got to crack the other side. You crack it. That way it's easier. It's easier for you to eat. You just crack a little bit. Kind of messy. Now, you do have to cut him down the middle and open him up. Don't worry, he's long dead by now. Why is he still moving? I don't know. <laughs> yeah, he's dead now. Okay. Now, this is the roe. You, can, you, you don't have to use this. Use that in a, stuff, in a stuffed lobster. You remove the head. You remove all of this stuff in here. This is the roe. 
Okay, when that's all out, this goes right into the pot. Okay? Now, when your clams and your mussels start to open, that's when you'd put in the soft fish, the fish that would, that would cook very fast, such as scallops, such as shrimp. Just put them right in there. Chris, if I could have the bowl. Mm -hmm. When you're all finished, this is what it's going to look like. I have another one right here, all ready to go. And watch your hands, Chris. Okay. Let go. Here we go, that soup of the pesh at Tedesco's restaurant. That's your clams, your lobsters, your shrimp, your mussels. We're going to be right back. More and more families are moving closer and closer to our forests. That's why, if you're careless with fire when you go to the forest, you could burn a lot more than trees. Well, thank you for being with us here at Tedesco's restaurant. We just wanted to show you a few things that we can do for you at any party, both here and at home. Uh, I promised you the address. It's 6701 Bergen Line Avenue in West New York. The zip code is 07093. I'm Mike Tedesco. I'm Chris Tedesco. We'd like to thank all our regular customers for our, their patronage and the new customers for some upcoming patronage. Thank you.